web design. Um, you can achieve really cool effects with CSS3, and it's really easy. So before, we had to do rounded corners. We had to do like sliding doors technique, have a bunch of different divs, like padding, and then have a bunch of different images later all sliced up. Now you can just do rounded corners with um, CSS3. Um, I'm going to go over this, this first three. I think we're going to have, these last three are pretty advanced. Um, I'll show a couple examples on the animations, because the animations are really cool. But we probably won't go over them until maybe at the end if we have time, like up at home. So here's some cool examples of CSS3. So here's a text shadow. Can everyone see this? So here's a text shadow example. So if you move your cursor, the shadow changes. Depending on where the light is. So this is a little bit of JavaScript just to like see where the like the where you're hovering. But this is all like all this like all these like shadows effects are all CSS3. Really cool. Next one, we have this rotating image gallery. It uses CSS transforms. So it's really cool. CSS3 is awesome. Okay, are you guys bored of this? <laughs> okay, the, the, link, the links are in the PowerPoint, so if you want to visit. I'm sure you could just like Google like CSS3 cool gallery, and you get like 10 minutes. What? Oh, I have not <laughs> okay, another example is this pure CSS3 walker. This is pure CSS. This is not JavaScript at all. And this shows you where the divs are. And it's using um, like CSS WebKit, like, or CSS like transforms to kind of like rock it back. Oh, no, no, no. It's just a pure animation. But this is CSS. Right? There's no JavaScript or Flash in this. You guys like CSS3 already? <laughs>
It's like a generator, so if you choose any color, you choose any gradient, and there's like, you can notice that there's like a black stop in between, right here, that's where the stop is, um, and I'll generate the code for you. So you can just copy and paste this, and that's super quick. So this is a nice, like, this is an easier and more visual way to do if you don't want, if you don't want to like read the documentation and do it yourself. Okay, uh, I was gonna say something else, but I forgot. Okay, whatever. Um, next is CSS3 job shadows. And job shadows, there's two types of job shadows in CSS3. So basically the first one is what it sounds like, what, what do you think of when you think of job text, or job shadow. It's like if you have an element, then it'll just apply some shadow underneath it. Um, and again, there's two different ones. I don't know why they're just laying like that. Um, so there's box shadow for Mozilla and one for WebKit. And it kind of, they both follow the same form, which is really nice. So the first one is a horizontal offset, um, which is like how far right do you want it to be? So negative numbers would make the shadow more left, and positive numbers would make the shadow more right. And vertical is like positive is more down, and negative is more up. And then blur is if you want it to be blurred. Like here's blur, if you have a blur factor of like zero, then it'll just be a hard shadow. Um, usually you don't want that because it doesn't look really great. Um, and then color of like whatever shadow you want to use. Like the shadow doesn't, doesn't have to be black. You can have like a pink shadow or something. Um, <clears throat> so then um, next we have text shadows. And uh, text shadow follows a similar, similar format, horizontal offset, vertical offset, blur factor kind of thing, and then the color. And you can't really see this. Um, uh, so I think that, personally, I don't really like text shadows, because they look kind of like, what's the word, not classy. Um, <clears throat> so, but you can also achieve some like other cool effects with them. For example, on my website, if you go to my website, it might be easier to see. Um, I've applied a kind of inverse white shadow. So instead of having like a typical black shadow like at the bottom where it actually looks like a shadow, I will apply a white shadow, but not on the bottom, on the top. So it's like I use a horizontal factor of like zero because I want to be centered, a vertical factor of negative one, and no blur factor and the color is white. So what it gives you, you can't really see it over here, but it kind of looks like it's like the letters are carved into the web page. Because it's like an inset kind of thing, so like if you highlight the top, it looks like it's carved in. So you can visit it on your computer if you would like to see more. Um, one last thing that we're going to cover, uh, CSS3 rounded corners. So rounded corners are really awesome. It's really great that we don't have to use like different divs and like the other like sliding doors um, kind of things anymore. Um, and basically it's just one thing. So you, use, you have a radius. So that specifies what the radius of the curve should be. Oh, this contrast is weird. But these are rounded corners, believe me. Um, so one great thing about all of these properties in general is that they degrade gracefully. So what I mean by degrade gracefully is on, on browsers that do not support CSS3, it won't like blow up or anything. It just like won't show up. So for example, on rounded corners, like if you're using like IE or something. Um, <laughs> the IE, well, like not nine, but like IE six or something. The corners just won't show up, and that's like not a big deal. Like you just won't. It's like square corners instead of round corners, right? It's not like your entire layout like just like exploded. Um, and same with like text shadows and like drop shadows and gradients. Like if you have them, it looks like cool, right? It's like very web two point But if you don't have them, it's not like a huge deal. Can anyone like tell me like a CSS property that is a huge deal? Like if it doesn't work in other browsers. Anything that you've learned today? Floats. Floats, exactly. If you have a layout that has three boxes and you want it to look ver or horizontal, and for some reason in IE floats don't work, then your entire layout is going to look like really messed up. And same with like any type of positioning. If you have like special positioning to make your layout look really awesome, and then like the layout like IE doesn't use like absolute positioning or fixed positioning, it's just gonna like not look right, right? But like in this case with CSS3, these are just kind of like enhancements. So it doesn't really matter like that much. Like it's not the end of the world if you don't have run corners. So yeah. Okay, I think that's it. Um, so you guys have a lab. I posted it on the website. Um, <clears throat> uh, it should be lab six, I think. And you're basically gonna be emulating Facebook's layout um, with floats and then like gradient and stuff. So yeah.
And then, like, it's not the end of the world if some people on IE can't, like, see the rounded corners. So, that's just my opinion. You should probably cut that out of the video. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then we might send out a survey later just to see, like, how you guys are thinking, like, what you guys think about the class, like, you guys think it's too fast, it's too slow, and maybe if you guys are interested in an optional workshop from like CSS animation, is that? Yeah. But just to raise up hands, who would be interested in learning CSS animations? Everyone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> cool. The end. Yeah.